From Software's games have a reputation of opaque and inscrutable stories and lore. Elden Ring is no different in this regard, and with a wider audience than their previous titles, more people than ever are experiencing From storytelling style for the first time. I've seen people discount their own understanding, imagining the story and lore to be a puzzle box that only some lore nerds like me can solve. But what if I told you that you solved the story of Elden Ring the first time you played the game? Or at least that your understanding of the story and world gained from playing is the intended narrative experience. In this video, we will be discussing Elden Ring's approach to storytelling, dispelling the myth of its inscrutability, and how solving the game is experiencing it. Let's get into it. Miyazaki and From Software's stories are in good company when it comes to having a reputation for being opaque and inscrutable. David Lynch's films are described in similar ways, with his fragmented and surreal narrative seemingly doing very little to direct the audience toward the point of his works. Because of this, Lynch was asked in an interview how to best experience his films. To this, he responded, You should not be afraid of using your intuition and feel your way through. Have the experience and trust your inner knowing of what it is. Just go in and have an experience in a different world. It's the most enjoyable thing to go into another world and discover it. Lynch's intent with his films is for the audience to have the experience of watching them and to trust their intuition and derive meaning from their experience. The focus is not on the plot or the message he is trying to convey, but to have the work engage in a conversation with the audience to derive meaning. And when it comes to meaning, Lynch describes finding meaning in media as a very personal thing, and the meaning for me is different than the meaning for somebody else. While I wouldn't claim that Elden Ring and the Souls games are as avant-garde as Lynch's works, Miyazaki and Lynch describe their method of storytelling in very similar ways. In an interview before the release of Elden Ring, Miyazaki was asked about the narrative of Elden Ring and he answered, We're still maintaining Elden Ring's world with a sense of depth and a fragmented narrative, we're still upholding our storytelling philosophy. It's a well-known bit of trivia in the community how Miyazaki's fragmented approach to storytelling is inspired by his childhood, but it's worth letting him explain it again here. When I was a kid reading books that were probably intended for an older age group, they were books that were very hard for me to understand. If I read the book straight up, I probably didn't understand some of the words or concepts in the meanings. But the work that I had to do, like leaving some of the story up to my imagination, or going back to read things again when I had greater understanding, that's a process that has a big influence on what I do today. There is a bit more to this quote, but we will get to that later. The takeaway now is that the fragmented storytelling approach Miyazaki favors is meant to engage the player, both by having them receive breadcrumbs of information that they can follow, and by engaging their own imagination. I think it sometimes gets lost that imagination is equally as important as following breadcrumbs when it comes to Miyazaki's fragmented storytelling. The narrative is not a puzzle to be solved because ultimately not all of the puzzle pieces are there. You're intended to bring your imagination, your perspective and ideas, into the storytelling. In a Guardian article from 2015, Miyazaki also told author Simon Park about his childhood inspiration for his storytelling method. Park wrote, Often he'd read passages of texts he couldn't understand, and so would allow his imagination to fill in the blanks, using the accompanying illustrations. In this way, he felt he was co-writing the fiction alongside its original author. This sentiment here mirrors a quote from David Lynch who said, Cinema is a thing that deals with things that are beyond words, and it's so beautiful. And so to go with cinema is the same kind of thing you go with music, but the intellect travels along with it. It's fantastic. It talks to you, but not with words alone. The intent in both cases is for the story to be a conversation between the work and the person, for one's imagination and intellect to be engaged in the media as the relationship between text, images, and perspective coalesce into a meaningful experience. One way in which I think the opaque and inscrutable reputation of the narrative of Elden Ring and the Souls games is inaccurate and detrimental is that it discourages this engagement. In this way, it is very similar to the reputation of these games being brutally hard. 
An anecdote I'm sure you've heard is about players bashing their heads against the Tree Sentinel right at the start of the game, and maybe you did it yourself. You get through the tutorial, and as your character emerges from the fringe folk hero's grave, you're welcomed by the vast expanse of Limgrave, and you see the Tree Sentinel down the hill. Because of the difficult reputation, players would repeatedly try to beat the Tree Sentinel, believing that this was signaling how brutal the experience would be, and act as a roadblock for those who couldn't get good. This ironically misses the point, which is that you have before you a vast and open world, and that when you encounter a roadblock, you can go in any number of other directions. The inaccurate reputation of the game being hard means that the game is taken as screaming at the player how unfair and brutal it is, when in reality it is a conversation with the player about the structure of the world, asking players to infer from there how they can engage with it. Similarly, when the reputation of Elden Ring in the Souls games is that narrative is an inscrutable puzzle box, it discourages players from following the breadcrumbs found and engaging their imagination and intellect. This is done through environmental storytelling, connecting in-game text and dialogue, recognizing external references and illusions, as well as correlating player experience with character experience. From gameplay to narrative, these games are designed for the player to engage with their systems and world, to be an active participant, to be immersed in the experience of the games. I've compared the storytelling style of From and Miyazaki with that of filmmaker David Lynch, but I also want to draw comparisons in storytelling style with the 2021 video game Returnal by Housemark. I won't spoil Returnal, but I do want to bring up broad strokes about how the fragmented storytelling is used in the game. The premise of Returnal is that the player character, Selene, is a deep space scout who is investigating a mysterious signal on the planet Atropos. She crashes her ship Helios on the planet, where she finds herself trapped physically in that she can't get off the planet, and also mortally in that some power of this mysterious alien planet won't let her die bringing her back to life after every failed attempt to search for the signal. The story goes places from here as the player learns about Selene's past and the history of an alien civilization now in ruins. Like Elden Ring, Returnal's challenging gameplay and narrative work together to create the experience. Returnal director Harry Kruger explained in a Push Square interview that, From the get-go, we envisioned Returnal as a game where the gameplay and the story are inseparable. So we have the roguelike nature of the game, we're embracing that from every perspective to strengthen the narrative and not combat against it. And he continues, The narrative itself has been designed around haunting the player. We want questions to be lingering inside your mind, hopefully even after the credits roll, where you'll be wondering certain things and interpreting them in different ways. Again, we see how the design of the narrative is in service of creating an experience for the player and that it synthesizes with gameplay to achieve this. But not just the gameplay. There's also a patchwork of references and illusions within the game, and another point of comparison for these games working with fragmented narratives. The few names I have given from Returnal, Selene, Atropos, and Helios are all from Greek mythology. Once this is apparent, you can see references and allusions to Greek mythology all over the place. I think it's safe to say that you're well aware of media employing references and allusions as cultural shorthand. That's nothing new. What I do think is interesting is how Returnal, the Souls games, and Lynch's films are all filled with a patchwork of references. They're just chock-a-block with them. Returnal heavily features Greek mythology, but not just Greek mythology. I'm staying vague here but there are plenty of other culturally relevant references to read, see, and hear in the game. Likewise, Elden Ring features alchemy, astrology, Christianity, Berserk of course, and more. And I think there are two reasons for this. The first and most practical is that when you're exploring a theme or trying to evoke an experience, you'll naturally look toward media that has explored those themes or created that experience for you. The second is that, as previously stated, these are cultural touchstones. The only way I can think to put this is that they help establish the vibe. These references and allusions tap into the shared cultural experience between designer and the player. They leverage the player's own relationship and understanding with these materials to resonate with the experience within the game, 
and in doing so taps into, as David Lynch says, something beyond words. And so that I meet my Lynch quote quota for the video, he said something else that I think is applicable here. My approach to film stems from my art background, as I go beyond the story to the subconscious mood created by sound and images. These shared cultural touchstones tap into something within our brains that subconsciously informs the player or viewer. It talks to you, but not with words alone. This comes together to form a trifecta of the gameplay actively engaging with the narrative, and both of these engaging with external references and illusions to tap into the player's experience. If you type in Elden Ring Story or Returnal Story into YouTube's search bar, it will definitely suggest autofilling your search with EXPLAINED. And there's obviously nothing wrong with wanting to know all of the available information in games where the storytelling is fragmented and they're stuffed with references and illusions. However, no matter how much of the plot you know or references you identify, there isn't one answer. There is your understanding and the meaning you derive, your experience with the media and how it resonates with you. You could read a synopsis of the events of Returnal or Elden Ring, read about the concepts and themes, but ultimately these elements are in service of the player's experience. You solved the story of Elden Ring the first time you played the game. And I think by now you may have picked up on the air quotes I've been making every time I say solved, because the stories of Elden Ring and the Souls games aren't puzzles to be solved, they are experiences to be understood. I mentioned earlier that there was one last bit to Miyazaki's quote about his storytelling method that I'll read now. I feel like you can have easy books that you can read all the time, but once in a while, I feel like you should feed yourself something a bit more challenging that gives you a sense of enjoyment and fun when you are finally able to understand it. That's the approach I like to take, to ensure that there is a sense of happiness in understanding what is being told. That quote is such a good summary of why I find the Souls games so gratifying, both in gameplay and narrative. The challenge of the gameplay and the fragmented storytelling are so satisfying when they finally click. To do that, you need the process of putting it together, of struggling to understand. And when it does click, that understanding is your own. Therefore, the intended story of Elden Ring is the one that you experience by playing the game. I can imagine some snarky person saying, if you've solved the game the first time you play, why even look into the lore? Because solving it isn't the point, you dingus. The story of Elden Ring isn't an equation to be solved. You can learn more about the world and come to better understanding of the lore, but the quintessential story of Elden Ring is that which you experience and what resonates with you. By continuing to explore the story and world of Elden Ring, we continue to engage with it. Our understanding is the sum total of our experience. I want to round out this video with a final quote about Elden Ring from Miyazaki just before release. I don't want to go into too many details for fear of spoilers, but it does get nice and complicated. There's a lot to explore here, I feel, and people who are that way inclined are really going to get something out of the game. I sure have, Miyazaki. Exploring the lore of Elden Ring on this channel has been such a wonderful experience, with everyone sharing their different perspectives. Because the story of Elden Ring is so dense with images, symbols, and references, it engages the intellect and imagination of people in so many cool ways that evoke similar themes, but unique details. Community analyses of Elden Ring about alchemy and cosmic radiation and the Tower of Babel and more enrich all of our experiences with the game, and I can't get enough of it. I have a lot of exploration left in me, and if you do too, then please like this video and subscribe to the Lore Hunter channel where I've got a nice collection of videos and more to come. Thanks for watching.